Hi, welcome back to this uh, video series on ISIS. So in the last video, we just left off at you know keying in the kinetics for CO2 hydrogenation. So we're just copying some models over and explaining you how the interface for ISIS uh, kinetics work. So uh, yeah, so this is uh, what we've keyed in so far: the CO2 hydrogenation reaction. It's a very tedious process, I must admit. At least, uh, yeah, now you know how this whole uh, thing actually, you know, how you need to key in your variables. So I'm just going to rename this as a uh, methanol synthesis. I'm going to bracket SCSI pack because that's where the model came from. Okay, SCSI pack, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, we found that in the previous videos that uh, the copying of these uh, reactions was very, very tedious. And of course, that helps you to familiarize with what the HiSys uh, interface is like. But in case you do need to copy reactions over, I believe there's actually another way. There's always a probably an easier way that we want to do it. So let's see whether we can export this uh, reaction set. Okay, so copy will become heterogeneous. Oh, yeah. So basically, uh. That's one function for you. So this is a CO2 hydrogenation for dash four. Now basically we made lots of Hysis has made lots of copies for some reason. I'm not even sure why. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, basically what we just did, let me delete this again. Basically what we just did is to copy the reaction. So we just made a duplicate of this reverse water gas shift. So I can make a duplicate of this CO2 hydrogenation and it'll probably just do the same thing which is not what, I mean, yeah, that's one of the things you can do to make your life easier. So let's delete this reaction and delete this reaction. However, of course, if you can, we want something better, right? We want to, you know, export the whole set if we can. So let's see whether we can export this reaction set to another HiSys file. So I'm just going to press export set. So uh, let's go to desktop and I'm going to put SCSI pack reaction set. Okay, so let's see if we can import a reaction set here. So let's go and put import. Let's go to desktop and then we see this RST. Let's open. Ta da! There you go, SCSI pack model. And everything's here, all nicely copied, and together with the reverse water gas shift reaction. Now this is, uh, I believe, yeah, I believe this is right, yeah, this looks about right. Yeah, anyway, yeah, basically, we have, uh, you know, copied the whole reaction over, and uh, this saves us a lot of effort. So instead of you know keying in everything from scratch, you now if you want so, and if you want to port, uh, import and export the reaction set, you simply have to you know do what I did, which is basically uh, you know exporting the set here. So we go to reactions, the reactions tab, go to export set, then you can save it as a reaction set RST, and then you go to here, you go to wherever you want to import the reaction to. So you just import and you just select and you just press open. And so that's what we did. So we're just going to attach it to the Ping Robinson package. And we are ready to go. So I'm just going to delete this set. I know it's kind of like all the hard work. But you know, it's not wasted. It's been recorded in video to show you how to you know key in a reaction set from scratch. And now I want to show you how to import it directly from another file so you don't ever have to you know copy tediously ever again ah. so saved you probably lots of effort and hours down there hopefully yeah so uh, let's just close this this is the other file that we don't want to touch and this is what we are doing so we have a blank simulation we have a blank simulation here and we are ready to go Okay, so uh, now we are on a blank simulation file. 
Now the first order of business is always to design the reactor system. So how do we you know, design the reactor system? Uh, well, you obviously start with a reactant stream. This is material stream 1. So I'll just put the reactor, I'll just name this called reactor reactants. Kind of a very obvious name. So in this uh, reactor reactants, what do we want? We expect this to be you know, very high purity stuff. So I'm just going to put H2 and CO2 over here. So I'm just going to make a stream with uh, 0.17 uh, 17 percent, 17 more percent CO2 and the rest will be hydrogen so hydrogen will be 0.83 and they should add up to a total of 1 if they don't you can just press normalize and you know it will calculate everything up for you and you just press OK so how do you edit this again? you go to the OK I'm going to close this again so you're going to be uh, reactor reactants I'm going to double click and you go to composition the composition is going to be here all these more fractions going to press edit and yeah here's all your stuff then that's how we do it and how did I actually you know add my material streams well you can either go to you know the f you can uh, I believe press F4 and all these will come out then you just press this blue color arrow here which is the material stream and that will actually uh, you know bring you that uh, material stream for you and uh, if you forget just press F4 F4 is a very convenient key for us to you know, get our get our reactants I mean get our you know uh, whatever you know this pallet, I call it a pallet, of all the all the sort of uh, things that we want to add. So there are lots of things here like the valves, compressors, ex expanders, compressors, pumps, everything is there. So yeah. And yeah, so if you if you forget where all these things are, just remember press the F4 button and all these will come out and you'll be just alright. So uh, the fluid package, well, we want to send this straight to the reactors because our first order of business is always to design the reactor system. So we're going to use the Ping Robinson Extended NRTL for for you know our reactor system. Yeah, it's like some people outside. <laughs> Never mind. There's some people outside the computer lab. Anyway, so. Uh, Ideally, we want our reaction temperature to be around 270 degrees C to 280 degrees C and we'll have a reaction pressure of about 80 bar. Okay, so what HiSys will do, given the temperature and pressure, is going to calculate all these properties you see here, thermodynamic properties, in what is known as a TP flash, temperature pressure flash calculation. If you're not sure what that is, don't worry first. Uh, basically what it's, it's saying is that it's using the Ping Robinson NRTL you know, package and it's going to, based on the temperature and pressure, calculate all the thermodynamic properties for you. That's what it means by TB flash. That's the basic idea behind it anyway. So let's resize this to make it a little nicer. And we're going to have a, a molar flow let's say of 2 times 10 to the power of 4 so you can just key in the 2e4 like that to have 20,000 this is essentially 20,000 uh, kg mole per hour and its default default uh, setting is in uh, kg mole per hour if uh, not you can actually change your units I believe I'm not going to show that in this video so um, what we have now is a reactor reactants <laughs> yeah, reactor reactants uh, uh, stream here. Okay, the reactor reactant stream, and we're gonna uh, send these guys into a plug flow reactor. And where do you find the plug flow reactor? It's right over here. So, if you're not sure, if you ever get lost, 
press F4, F4, under the common tab, we'll find the plug flow reactor just beside the CSTR looking thingy, which is actually a CSTR. So the plug flow reactor is what looks like a pipe, but it's not a pipe. So it's here, PFR 100. So I'll just write uh, plug flow with catalyst. Okay. And the fluid package will be Ping Robinson. And you can press close. And there you go. You have your first reactor. Now to connect these streams, there are two ways. One of course is you can uh, click on your double click your plug flow reactor and you just go reactor inlets. And that actually helps you to connect. And if you want to break, you just uh, go to this here. Click uh, right click the line, right click the line, and you press break connection. Okay, the connection should have been broken, but break, come on, break. Yeah, that does it. So that breaks the connection. And the other way, of course, which I personally prefer to connect our reactor, the inlet streams, is to you press control. When you press control, press and hold control, and shift your mouse close to each of these uh, reactors and you know the, the plug flow reactor and material stream. So when you shift to when you press control and shift to one of these blue boxes, you can see it's saying out. So you can click and drag while holding the control key. And you drag it all the way until this uh, arrow is showing a square. And you just let go. And there you go. Your material stream is connected to the plug flow. So that's uh, that's to make uh, connecting things a lot easier. And if you want to shift around, my personal preference is of course to use the arrow keys. So up, down, left, right. So I'm using the arrow keys here. Yep. So like a gamer, you know. Yeah. So uh, you'll give this outlet uh, reactor effluent. Okay, and it's, it's telling me that, uh, you know, we need a reaction set. You can see this part in red. So let's take a look at reactions, and we'll take the reaction set, SCSI pack model. Okay, and it's saying unknown dimensions, sure. So let's take a look at parameters and all that. Okay, so yeah, total volume, total volume. Let's just give it arbitrarily 100 meter cube. Because it's you know, uh, it's a it's a nice number, okay. So maybe sixty meter cubes will be okay as well. But we'll just start with hundred, arbitrarily, and then we'll have a fifty meter long reactor, and we'll have one tube only. Well, and then you ask me why do we need this number of tubes? Well, we need this number of tubes in case you want to have a diabetic reactor. I.e. to say that you want to cool the reactor using some water or some uh, high pressure saturated water in order to generate steam or something like that. Just to cool the reactor as it goes. Then you increase the number of tubes so that you have this thing called a boiling water reactor for methanol production. So yeah, you see this uh, BWR. So uh, boiling water reactor is typically abbreviated BWR. It's typically used for methanol synthesis. And okay, it says a boiling reactor, boiling water reactor contains a tube bundle which typically contains several thousands of tubes. And the catalyst is loaded in the tubes which are cooked by the shell side with boiling water. Hence the name boiling water reactor. And the temperature of the boiling water is controlled by adjusting the pressure. So all these shell and all these tubes are basically to you know have the boiling water reactor work for you. Okay? So anyway, we'll just leave it as one for now until unless we want to uh, put that boiling water reactor thingy in. So let's just put, uh, let's just keep it adiabatic for the time being because that's the simplest and most practical, the easiest to design kind of a reactor. So the void fraction typically, either you take it from literature 
or you just estimate at a 0 0.5. Why 0 0.5? Uh, well, uh, some void fractions they usually go from 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. I mean, 0 0.5 is a very decent uh, median value. If you're not sure, you have to check for your particular catalyst, what your void fraction is. Uh, you have to pull that from the literature data, or you just perform some of your own estimations and calculations. And all these catalyst data, such as the particle diameter, sphericity, all this you have to fill in yourself. Though the solid heat capacity kind of doesn't affect the steady state uh, reactions. Maybe in some video I'll explain why a little more slowly. But uh, anyway, yeah. So we'll just leave it as this, leave it as a default, so unless you want to change it. Uh, and when you change it, uh, just make sure you are closely matched to the literature data. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm not going to touch that. So basically, the idea is th it says that there's an unknown delta p, there's an unknown pressure drop. So to go and see your pressure drop, you can go to the parameters in under the the design tab. And you go to the parameters uh, tab, and you just press Agon equation. Okay, so what does it say? Calculated pressure gradient in plug flow reactor with catalyst is excessively high. I'm just going to press OK. So okay, what just happened? Uh, when I press the Agon equation, it's going to take the flow in. It's going to take the flow in here. And it's going to calculate a pressure drop based on the, the void fraction that you specified. It's going to take uh, the volumetric flow rate and all the superficial velocity if you have learned this stuff before and it's going to calculate a pressure drop so if the pressure drop is too high what it's saying is that hey uh, my inlet pressure is about 8000 kilopascals so if the pressure the pressure drop is too much it's going to be like uh, more than 8000 kilopascals this pressure drop so what do we do that that's uh, probably one thing I, I can think of right now. It's probably that the flow rate of this uh, reactant is a little too much for this. If because if I decrease, if I decrease the superficial fluid velocity, my pressure drop is going to drop. So let me just half the flow to one e four kg mole per hour, and look, it's turned blue. Uh, means to say it's salt. But you can see the pressure drop is still pretty high at about 5276 kPa. Now that's, that's pretty insanely high. So we don't want that. We want something like 5 bar and below. Okay, so let's reduce the flow again. I'm going to halve it again so it's 5E3 or 5000. Okay. And the pressure drops about 10 bar. So let me halve it again. 2500. 270. Now that's that's something a little more palatable. So let's bring it down to 1000. And you get about a very decent pressure drop of about 54.36 kilopascals. And you can see the outlet temperature is about 293. And there's some conversion actually going on. Some of our our product is being uh, converted to methanol. Uh, some of CO2 is being converted to methanol, some of it's being converted into carbon monoxide, and the rest is, you know, it's just there. Okay, so there you go. I mean, this is just a very simple reactor setup. Uh, our first reactor setup using 1000 kg mole per hour of reactants at 270 degrees C. So that's uh, how we set up a plug flow reactor with Catalyst. So I, I think I'll stop here for this video before I kind of drone on for like another hour or so. Yeah, so that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video with more, you know, more things to talk about. Okay, we'll be talking about uh, you know, adjusting our reactor system in the next video. So thank you. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.